Republican Accounts Committee. Uh, agenda item one is apologies. And can I ask for apologies from Mr. Hildage to be recorded, please? Agenda item two then is the minutes of the 4th of March 2021, which are pages six to eight of your pack. Um, are members content uh, with those minutes and agree that I sign them as being accurate? Content. Agreed. Okay, thank you very much. Agenda item three is the declaration of members' interests. Members at each meeting, members are required to register relevant financial or other interests in the register of members' interests. Does any member have any interest they wish to declare this afternoon? Chair, if I may, I, um, it's not necessarily an interest, but it's um, to confirm that I received a representation from a um, firm with an interest in our um, renewables uh, investigation, and they forwarded me some um, uh, written material, which I will share with the clerk. Okay, any thank you. Brothers? Any other declarations of interest? Mr Muir? I would declare I received representations from Renewables NI in relation to the report we are going to consider today. Okay, any others? Yeah, Mr. Uh, Chair, uh, just to acknowledge that I received ROCS payments from solar panels. You what, sorry? I received ROCS payments from solar panels okay, right. on my own price. Thank you. Yeah. I suspect we all received uh, information from um, uh, Mr. Agnew, so I would uh, declare that as well. Okay. Chair, I, I was also contacted by Mr. Agnew. Yeah. Well, I declared that some time ago. So, um, right. Thank you. Um, but I, uh, whilst I got a call, I, I didn't have a conversation. I just told them that we would consider him coming in front of this committee uh, and giving evidence, which we will come to later in the meeting. Agenda item four, matters arising, pages 16 to 17. Members, I refer to correspondence in the um, 4th of March 2021, your PACs, pages 16 and 17, from Sarah Long, the Chief Executive of the Education Authority, to John Walsh, which addresses a number of matters in relation to the governance of St Mary's Broda. We received a copy of this via the Northern Ireland Audit Office. Ms Long addresses Mr Walsh's concerns regarding membership and frequency of meetings of the Finance Subcommittee and the availability of information in consideration by committee and inform Mr Walsh that St Mary's Bola is a Catholic maintained school. All governance matters should be referred to the relevant management authority, i.e. the um, CCMS. Members, at last week's meeting we consider other correspondence in this matter and agreed to forward it to the Education Committee as the subject matter is more appropriate for their action. Are members content that we also forward this recent correspondence to the Education Committee for their information? Agreed? Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Okay. Broadcasting, can you bring in Mr. Kelly Bingham, the Northern Ireland Audit Office Assembly Support Officer? Afternoon, Karen. Can you see and hear us okay? Afternoon, Chair. Yes, I can see and hear you. Okay. Um, so you, you're now in the spotlight, Kyle, and if you wish to speak, please unmute yourself. Um, and we're also delighted this afternoon, then, as we move on to Agenda Item 5, at correspondence, pages 19 to 38 of your pack, um, to welcome Mr. Kieran Donnelly and Mr. Thomas Wilkinson to the meeting. I refer you to correspondence dated the 1st of March 2021 in your packs at pages 19 to 25 from Peter May, the uh, accounting officer of the Department of Justice regarding the Department's intentions to introduce a statutory registration scheme, an update on the progressing the five recommendations made in the PAC's Managing Legal Aid Report 2017. It would appear that progress is being made on all uh, five recommendations, but that some areas are complex and require primary legislation such as in the case the recommendation on the taxing master. In relation to the statutory registration scheme, um, progress has been slow on this and the Justice Committee recently brought this matter to the Public Accounts Committee's uh, attention as the Committee had concerns regarding the audit ambitions versus the quality of the scheme. Um, Controller and Honour General, do you have any comment you want to make on the Department's plans regarding the statutory registration scheme? Well, I'm very pleased that we're moving ahead at last with statutory registration, uh, and that's one of the, 
the things we've been waiting a long time for. Uh, th there is some uh, debate as to just how that would work in practice, uh, and um, I suppose the balance between what they say is audit and compliance uh, and quality. Uh, I don't want to prejudge it, but uh, we will we will look at this closely during our legal aid audit to see, see how it's working out. But it is it is progress. Okay, <clears throat> members, we were due to have a further MOR in June. Uh, regarding the Managing Legal Aid Report 2017, however, I don't think it's necessary now. As this update has provide, provide, this update has provided us the information which we would have needed, um, and you've heard what the Comptroller and Auditor General has had to say. Um, are members content? Great. Okay. Um, I note that Mr. May is also writing to the Justice Committee, and will be providing the same update on the recommendations to this committee. So I don't see any further action required by the Public Accounts Committee. Are members content to note? Agreed? Yes. Agreed. Agreed. Okay. Okay. Members, I refer to your correspondence dated uh, 2nd of March in your pack, pages 26 to 27, the Environmental Justice Network, Ireland, EJNI, regarding the recommendation 13 of the Public Accounts Report on the Managing Capital Projects. The recommendation states... The committee recommends that the Northern Ireland Civil Service works with the judiciary to consider if the balance needs to be reviewed between having a higher bar for taking judicial re review, while at the same time not discouraging genuine concerns from being raised. Um, this should uh, include an examination of the cost of lodging a judicial review in Northern Ireland. The committee uh, consider this would help to reduce the risk of vexatious challenges being made. Members, the Environmental Justice Network Ireland are concerned that this recommendation is just is unjust and unreasonably conflating the Department's successful defence of a judicial review or uh, of a specific ground of review with a vexatious legal challenge. Members, from our report on major capital works, the committee acknowledged that public organisations with an interest must be allowed the opportunity to contest projects on environmental or other issues. However, it is concerned about the context in which judicial reviews delay or add cost to public sector projects. End of quote. Um, and that is a direct quote from the report. Members, I refer you to the correspondence from Chris Murphy, dated the 3rd of March 2021, in your pack, pages 28 to 33, requesting an update on the recommendation 13 of the PAC report on major capital works. Mr Murphy refers to our previous correspondence from EJNI in his email and asks that uh, the recommendation 13 is recalled. Members of the committee wrote to Mr Murphy on the 13th of November 2020 explaining that the recommendation uh, cannot be recalled and stated that the report seeks, and I quote, seeks to achieve a balance between having a higher bar for taking judicial review while at the same time not discouraging genuine concerns from being raised. Members, are you content that we write back to Mr Murphy confirming the Committee's position of the 13th of November 2020, explaining that we cannot provide a progress report uh, as per his request on recommendations 13, as we are still awaiting the Department of Finance's Memorandum of Reply, brackets MOR, which is the official response uh, from the Department on whether it accepts the PAC's recommendation and how it intends to implement them. A reminder has been sent to the Department as this response is now overdue. Members, I have to ask if you are content that we also write back to the EJNI along the same lines and provide assurances to both parties that we still uh, share this response. We will sorry, share this response once we are in receipt of it. Agree that would be appropriate. Agreed. Agreed. Okay. Everyone agreed? Thank you. Members, I refer you to correspondence um, dated the 4th of March 2021 in your pack at pages 34 to 35 from Edward Cook and his uh, response from the University of Ulster uh, dated the 28th of January 2021 regarding a Freedom of Information Act request on university halls of residence demographics. Mr Cook has also copied this correspondence to the Economy Committee. Are members content to note? Okay. Members, I refer you to a memo dated the 8th of March 2021 at uh, 
page 36 in your pack from the Clerk of the Communities Committee regarding the Northern Ireland Audit Office reports on the Public Accounts uh, Committee holding under premise. The, and as the Communities Committees are Communities Committee are keen to update as the Northern Ireland Audit Office reports are released. <coughs> Members, are you content that we write back uh, to the Communities Committee explaining that, unfortunately, until the Committee has sight of the Northern Ireland Audit Office reports and has had an opportunity to consider them, it is not in a position to release them to another Committee? Um, and for example, three of the five DFC reports have not been published yet. Um, However, the committee uh, periodically reviews its forward work programme and its priorities and will inform the Communities Committee as soon as it is possible if it intends to release any relevant reports in the coming months. Members content? Content. Members, I refer you to correspondence from Mr Kieran Donnelly, the Comptroller and Auditor General, dated the 9th of March uh, 2021, in your table packs, um, page 2, regarding the correspondence submitted by an anonymous whistleblower to the Office of Ms Leslie Hogg, the Clerk and Chief Executive of the Northern Ireland Assembly. The Comptroller and Auditor General has completed his investigations and confirms that it does not raise any issues, nor does it provide any new evidence to support the historical claims that are being made and now considers the matter to be permanently closed. Members, are you content that we write to the whistleblower stating that after lengthy consideration over a number of years, the Public Accounts Committee is satisfied that the matter has been fully considered by the Public Accounts Committee and uh, regretfully is not in a position to take the matter any further. Agreed? Agreed. Okay. Okay. Um, broadcasting, can I ask you if you could please bring in Mr. Brian O'Neill, Senior Auditor, uh, and ask Mr. B, Mr. O'Neill and Mr. Bingham, Bingham if they can, can hear us okay? Yes, Chair, I can hear you. Okay, thank you. Answer you. Yes, Chair, I hear you fine, thank you. Okay. Right, okay. Members, then, as the committee took a decision earlier on, we will now go into closed session for Agenda Item 6, briefing and preparation session to prepare for our sixth inquiry into generating electricity from renewable energy. The committee is now in closed session. Senate Chamber, programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly, Senate Chamber, programme signed.